number three, book of Genesis chapter number three, we're going to look, we, last time uh, we looked at the doctrine of sin, uh, the, we we studying on the doctrine of sin, that's what we're still on, <clears throat> we're going through the, uh, the basic Bible doctrine for the let us know what we believe, why we believe it. And uh, the doctrines, a lot of folk don't know what doctrine is. They know the word, but they don't know what the doctrine means and, uh, and the, the, the reason for our doctrine. And uh, God help us that we'll know tonight that we'll, we'll take these lessons and we'll learn from them and we'll allow them to, to speak unto us. You say, preacher, this original stuff. Well, no, it's not original. It's Bible. I didn't come up with it. God did. And uh, it's his stuff. It's not mine. Uh, all I am is a relayer of what he has to say. And uh, so tonight, uh, that's what I want to look at. We're going to look at the doctrine of sin. And in, like, like I said, last time we looked at the entrance of sin. We talked about where sin come from, where it originated at, where it, where it started at. We Found out that it started in the garden. We're still in the garden tonight, matter of fact. Okay, that's where we're still going to be. Uh, but uh, we found out that it started in the garden as far as earthly sin. But actually, sins are, or the, it's the origin of sin didn't start in the garden. The origin of sin started in heaven. Yes, sir. When Satan rebelled against God. Yes. When Satan tried to make himself equal with God. Now, that's where the origin of sin was. That it started there. Uh, with Satan, and that's why God threw him out, because he tried to exalt himself to be like the Most High God, and uh, therefore he threw him out and a third of all the angels. And somebody said, "Where did the devils come from?" They came from heaven. That's where they came from. Uh, where did them demons come from? All them demons are y'all as angels. That's all they are. And uh, and uh, that you don't find, you know, you, you just what you'll find is them demons. Are fallen angels. A third of them fell. Well, Satan, I'm not getting off into the Genesis 6 part of the angels. That's not what I'm getting that to. But I am looking tonight at the, at the, uh, the Genesis 3 part of sin. Okay? Uh, and we're going to look at the effects of sin tonight. We looked at the entrance of sin to begin with. Tonight, we're going to look at the effects of sin. When you think about sin, we told you last time, who remembers what the definition of sin is. Who remembers that? Huh? Missing, coming short of the mark. Missing the mark, exactly. Uh, that's what, that, that's the, 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 the definition of sin as far as what the Webster says about it, as far as uh, what, Webster, what Webster teaches us uh, there in the 1828, that sin means it re re reflects on an archer and how then an archer will draw his bow. And he'll draw that bow and have a target. And that target is, for, is to be hit with that arrow. And when that, ar when, when, that, uh, when that arrow would come short of the mark, they would say, you've sinned. You've sinned. You've come short of the mark. God's got a mark for us to hit. Yes, He's got a mark for us to set. Somebody said, what is it? It's here in the Word of God. Right. And we're going to look at some things tonight. When we come short of it, God said it's sin. Amen. It's sin. So we're going to look at the effects of sin. The sin of Adam, we know, is what we're studying about. God that brought God's judgment upon all creation. Look with me uh, in Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to begin to read with verse number 14. Genesis chapter 3, and beginning to read with verse number 14. If you find your place and you can't enable, I invite you to stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Genesis 3 and beginning with verse number 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, this is after the sin in the garden, and now God's giving judgment unto, unto creation. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed, notice this, above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, 
and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, con in, and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the, and in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and into dust shalt thou return. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word tonight. Help us, God, as we break the bread of life. I pray you'll give us unction to teach and to preach what you said. And God, help us not to throw our ideas there, but God, just to preach what thus saith the word of God. And God, help it to become effectual in our life. God, draw us nearer. Help us, Lord, to care about our life. Help us to care about how we live. Help us, God, not to shame, bring shame and reproach unto you. I pray tonight, God, help me. I sure do need you. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you and be seated. The sin of Adam has now brought the judgment of God upon creation. We find out uh, here in the scripture uh, that, well, this is what we've read, we've known, or is known as the fall of man. It's Adam's fall. Sister Kayla sings that song about Adam's fall. Uh, the first Adam is what brought us death. And thank God the second Adam is the one that brings us life. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, I'm glad that, 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 that God made a way, that God found a way. He didn't have to find one. Let me say that. He didn't have to find one that Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. God knew that there was a way and God had that way planned. He was from everlasting unto everlasting. So uh, I'm glad that God made a way, let me put it like that, to deal with our sin. Now, this is uh, th this particular scripture that we looked at here. We find that there are many things uh, uh, that God said here. He he started with dealing with the serpent, and and uh, he pronounced judgment upon the uh, the serpent. He and then he went to Eve, and and then we find uh, upon Adam and upon the and upon the animal king. Everything God pronounced judgment upon because of the sin of Adam. You know that, don't you? Uh, that, uh, somebody said, well, I don't see where God pronounced judgment upon uh, the animals. Well, let me ask you this. Do animals die? Yes, sir. Do they? Yes. Why they die? Because they were cursed. Because of sin. Now, somebody did the animal, animals sin. They didn't have to. God gave dominion to Adam over the animals. And everything that God gave, gave to Adam dominion over fell under the curse of Adam. When Adam fell, all of it, all of the creation had to, uh, to face the curse that Adam fell under. Listen to what he said in verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. Now here's a question. Somebody said, well, did the serpent walk on legs before? I don't know how he was. I know he was still a serpent. Uh, but I know this, I know now he crawls upon his belly and uh, I know now he eats the, <laughs> eats the dust. But, but notice this, because thou hast done this, he said, thou art cursed above, listen to this, all cattle. And above every beast of the field. In other words, you're cursed above them. The curse upon you is worse than the curse upon them. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I, you know, uh, somebody said this. I want you to think, and I, I'm, I don't want to run this rabbit too far because I'm talking about the serpent now. This is the judgment of the serpent. Okay, that's, that's what somehow or other, for some reason or other, that's what Satan chose to enter in uh, when he tempted man, when he tempted Eve, when he tempted man in the garden. He chose to enter into that serpent. And God pronounced judgment upon that serpent. Now, is every snake the devil? No, Satan, that, that, that serpent was a, is, 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 is a creation. Just like the devil was a creation. All right, he's part of God's creation. 
But now here's the thing about it: uh, that that what what is why is he cursed above every above every uh, a creature? I, I don't know of a more hated animal or more hated being than there is today than a snake. Is that right? I mean, there's not one that's hated anymore. Then I'm talking about there's a, there's some that's a, that's as harmless as they can be. But I tell you what, you let somebody get around them that don't know them, what they gonna do? They gonna stomp their head in the dirt, right? I, I look, uh, and I used to be the same way. I, I I try to know what what's good and what's bad now. But you say, preacher, you're going against what God said. God said, bruise his head. Well, he Jesus did that. Okay, I ain't got to. Uh, but look, I, there's the, the curse on that serpent is greater than the curse on any other animal. And man has a hatred. Man has a fear. Uh, man has a tremendous fear. I can't help when I start talking about about that. Uh, Angela's ain't June. Y'all know June. June can't hear it thunder, but she can find a snake, son. I guarantee you. Uh, she, she, she can't hear nothing, but if there's a snake within 40 acres, it's going to crawl her, her path, and she's going to make it. She don't know how loud she's talking. I seen her break up church one night. I'm talking about a black snake come through the window of the old church house. And son, she shut church service down that night, hollering at Reuben uh, to kill that snake. And, and well, uh, you know, uh, it's, it, that, that serpent is, is a hated creature. It's hated. It's cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly, he said, shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. He said, and I will put enmity, here we go, between the seed of the, uh, between thee and the, and, and the woman and between uh, thy seed and her seed. First of all, we see the enmity between uh, the, the, the serpent and the woman. Right? We see the enmity, the hatred. Right? The, then we see between, it's, it's, it's passed down between thy seed and her seed. We see that. And in, that we're not talking just about fleshly things here now. We're talking about something greater than what you and I can see at the surface. We're talking about the prophecy that God's given there that he's going to send his son here for long. And that the son, his son, the Lord Jesus, would, would conquer the devil once and for all. Thank God. Hey, look, when Jesus said it's finished on the cross. Uh, I look, the devil was busy at his business. Uh, he was trying his best to get everything done. And when the, the, when the devil found out Jesus was dead, he wanted to keep him dead. But brother, when the third day come around and the stone rolled away, uh, the party of hell ceased. Uh, and I want you to know the victory was given because the head of Satan was bruised on that day when Jesus come forth from the grave. So I'm grateful that the, that the prophecy of what Jesus done, oh, there, there's a doctrine of sin and, and, and there's a, the sin of the serpent uh, that, that he, and the judgment upon him. But there's a judgment upon old, old Slewfoot himself too. There's a judgment upon the old devil. I'm telling you one day for long, it ain't gonna be long after judgment. God's gonna take him by the nap his neck or Michael is, uh, uh, sling him off into a lake that's burning with fire and he'll burn for eternity. Why? Because of the judgment that God placed upon him because of his sin. Sin brings judgment, y'all. Not only on the devil, but not only on the, on, on, on the serpent, but upon Eve and upon Adam, upon the animal kingdom. Listen, upon vegetation. <laughs> Amen. Could you imagine leaving, living in that garden? Could you? I, I can't even imagine it, son. Could you imagine walking in, getting up and having a in the middle of December, and you say, "Boy, I'd sure like a peach today," and walk over and grab you one and eat it. You couldn't get that apple because Brother Mark said that was the one that was wrong. Okay, but um, <laughs> but but could you imagine anything was at your disposal, everything there? Until God put man out of, somebody said, where is it? I don't know. I don't know where it's at. But I do know this, that when God placed man outside the garden, when God put him outside that garden, the man had a different way. Adam had never seen what he was looking at when he was in the garden. Things had changed because of sin. Things had changed because of, because of sin. And, and, 
And boy, I'm going to tell you, we, we, one day, one day we're going to get to seeing what Adam saw before the fall. Amen. Yeah. One day we're going to get to experience a little bit of what Adam experienced before the fall. I, I can't imagine. Somebody said, what's heaven going to be like? It's going to be better than the garden. Amen. Yeah. It's going to be better than what God had there. And, uh, and look, the tree of life's going to be there. And look, there's a lot of folks just want some leaves off that thing. I won't stay there and I'm going to leave that alone. All right. Now he placed all the creation under the curse of sin because of Adam's sin. All of creation, all of creation became cursed because of one man's sin. Romans 6, 23 said this. How many of you quote it? You ought to be able to quote it. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Notice that first part. The wages, the consequences, the payment for sin. For sin. For being a sinner, there is a payment. Somebody said, "Why well, before, Adam, before Adam ate of the forbidden fruit, took of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, there was no such thing as death. Adam would have lived forever communing with God. Eve would have lived forever communing with God. That white tail book would have lived forever. I'm serious. I'm, all of God, Adam had done named them all. All of them would have lived forever communing with God. But sin came. Sin came. And and because of that sin, man, the consequence of sin, the payment of sin, the penalty of sin, or the wages of sin is what? It's death. We must die. We must die. Somebody told me a long time ago, if you look at your hand, I don't know what that, that's an old saying. You ever heard that saying? Open your hand up and you look. I don't know if y'all got one, but mine's got an M in the middle of my hand there. Right there. You got one? That's just God reminding us that we must die. We must die. I don't know. That's probably coincidence, but I liked it pretty good. All right. If, you, if part of your M's gone, that means you're already dying some. All right. So, some of you get up and run to the funeral home real quick, okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, that, that's, uh, we're going to die. We must die. The death, along with suffering and sorrow in our day, is a reminder that we're still under the same curse as we was in Genesis 3. The curse has not changed. We're still under that same curse. What is, what is the curse of Adam? Well, unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of, eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Y'all hear that? Why does them briars grow? Why does grass take over your crops? Huh. Because of sin. Because of, of sin, these things happen. Adam, uh, Adam had it in the garden. He had everything at his disposal. He had everything. There was nothing he needed. But when God put him out in the garden and stood at the angel there and wouldn't let him get back in the garden, uh, then, then Adam had to look at the ground where thorns and thistles were growing. Grass was would overtake the crops. Disease was in all because of, of sin. You see, so sin does more than, sin, sin's more than just being a, something the preacher preaches about, but sin's a killing us. Sin's killing you tonight. You're dying because you're a sinner. You're dying because of sin. You're going to, you're going to spend eternity somewhere or another. You're going, this body is going back to the dust like he told Adam. Because of sin. 
because you're a sinner, because we're a sinner. And boy, had it not been for God's merciful way of, 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 of rescuing our dying soul, uh, then we'd be without hope today. But I'm grateful that God made a way that we didn't have to spiritually die, ain't you? Amen. Let us consider this also. I want you to think about this. A lot of things get blamed on Adam. But I was studying this this morning. I said, hold on, I'm going to put this in my notes. Let us consider this. We're not only sinners by nature, but we're also sinners by choice. Yes, sir. We choose to sin yes, sir. a whole bunch. Right. I know we, we choose to sin because sometimes uh, it's more convenient to sin. Uh, sometimes it'll keep us out of trouble to sin, we think. But we need to understand that it's not going to keep us out of trouble. Uh, the Bible said, and we'll get to that in a minute, be careful uh, that you sin will find you out. Uh, therefore, we can uh, put all the blame on Adam. No, we can't do that. We must take responsibility for ourselves. We live in a society where young'uns today, where young adults, where the millennials, they, they want to blame their ignorance on their parents. It ain't, listen, let me tell you, it, it, you can't blame your sinfulness on nobody else. You're a sinner. You're, you're a sinner. You're the one who chooses to talk the way you talk. You're the one who chooses to walk the way you walk. Amen. Let me tell you, I know about the, about the providence of God. I know something about it. If, if I was just doomed and dead, if I had to follow the footsteps, if I had to just do the way, I was to, the way my parents were, I wouldn't be in church tonight, brother. I'd be uh, in a bar room somewhere or another uh, with, 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 a, with my third or fourth wife uh, or doing something like that. But thanks be unto God, God made a difference in me. And I'm thankful that uh, when he rescued my soul, I'm grateful that he changed the path of the, of, of the history, the where I came from, I was on a a different path. That's right. We're sinners by choice. Well, you, we y'all, y'all just we, we, we baby. You, my, our, my parents is the reason I'm like I am. You're a sinner because you choose to sin. Amen. You're a sinner because you choose to sin. You don't have to go that way. You got a choice. I know the Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. I believe every word of it. But I'm telling you this. You don't have to fall that way. That's just like you don't have to be a lukewarm church. Amen. Even though when the church said the, the Laodicean age church would be a church that's lukewarm. And brother, we're living in the Laodicean age. We don't got to be a lukewarm church. We do it because we choose to be. Amen. Amen. We choose. We come, we come to church half cocked. We live half cocked. We, we live like we're, uh, like we got, got that life by the, uh, by the horns. We got everything uh, figured out. But look, one day, I'm telling you, we're going to meet our maker. One day we're going to die because we're sinners. In order for us to understand what the effects of sin are, let us remember what sin actually is. Let me say this. Now, what you and I think about sin don't really matter. I've heard folks say stuff like this. I mean, you heard, I mean, well, what sin to you might not be sin to me. You ever heard that? Yes, you ever been here? Here's the sad, sad part. You ever been guilty of thinking it or saying it? Let me tell you all this, folks. What God says about sin counts. Yes, sir. What God thinks about sin counts. Amen. What we think, what we say, may, it, it really, really don't matter. But what God says does. Men sometimes disagree on what is and what's not sin. But let's get God's opinion on what sin is. Now there's four passages in the Word of God in the New Testament that give us the definition of what sin is. There's four passages. I want you to turn with me to these, to these and let's look at what God says. Uh, turn, turn to the book of Romans chapter 14 real quickly. Romans chapter 14. Now in the 14th chapter of the book of Romans, 
Paul is talking about the offenses, or he's teaching about the offenses by eating that that sacrificed unto idols. He goes all, he, he teaches the same thing to the church at Corinth, if you remember over there. But in this 14th chapter here, Paul really gets involved in it. And, and, uh, and look, look at the last verse in the chapter right now while we're there, and we'll, we'll, we'll back up and talk a little bit. The Bible said, And he that, that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. All right? God said that. I didn't say it. Does that mean that you can be sinning by not having faith? Well, sin is what? I mean, not, the opposite of faith is what? It's doubt, isn't it? Doubt causes what? Confusion, doesn't it? Doubt is confusion. And God said he's not the author of confusion. The Bible said in Hebrews that without faith it's what? Impossible to please him. It's impossible. It's no way to, to please him. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul said this, uh, uh, that these folk, there were some here uh, uh, that, that were new, new creatures. They were new converts. And they come out of idolatry. And they got so gloriously saved that they didn't want nothing to do with idolatry anymore. Now Paul told them, Paul's told them in, in Corinth, he's speaking here, he's speaking to those more aged, to those more, uh, those more uh, able Christians uh, that's not so offended by the things uh, of idolatry anymore. He said, you're free. I, if you want to eat the stuff, eat the meat, the sacrifice and the idols, you could eat it. But said, here, consider this now. I want you to consider those that are weaker. I want you to consider those that are not as far along. Hold on now, y'all. Y'all look at me and hold it and let's think a minute. Sometimes we seem to think what we do is our business and it don't affect nobody else. Well, God didn't say that. God said, if it offendeth my brother that I eat meat, Brother Michael, he said, I'll not eat meat, not just for today, not just for tomorrow, but he said, so long as I live. Now, when you, when you, when you read this, this 14th chapter, You'll, you'll find here that Paul's saying to these people that there's nothing wrong with eating it. But when it becomes offensive to the brother that has just came out of idolatry, that is not a faith. That is not a faith. Listen, for whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Now, folks, when we operate in ourself and we operate apart from faith, God help me because I'm telling you, I have to revisit it every day. I have to revisit it every day. I really do. Yeah. My faith, I'm telling you, I have to, uh, and God, Lord, increase my faith. Yes, sir. Lord, help my faith. Help my faith to, I know, I've seen I've seen the hand of God. Brother Michael, I have in the past year, I have seen miraculous things from God. And you know, I still catch myself doubting. I still catch myself wondering, how am I, how's this going to happen? How am I going to do it? How am I going to make it? I'll just be honest with you. And... and and my wife's right here, and I'm not lobbying for nothing. And it's not even on my mind. Matter of fact, I've been asked by some, did I want them to go to the church and ask for more money for me? I said, no, it ain't time. I don't want that. But on paper, I ain't supposed to be able to pay my bills right now. On paper, I'm not supposed to be. I'm telling you, and I see God, 
every month, every month, but somebody said, what about your savings? Well, God gave it to me. God gave it to me back yonder. He's big enough to take care of me. Yes, Boy, sometimes, sometimes it's hard for me to stay in the boat. I'm just being honest with you. Sometimes it's hard for me to stay in the boat. Why? Because my faith begins to fail. What's not a faith? What do you say? It's sin. It's sin. And God help me. God help me. That's the first one. I ain't going to stay on that a little longer. I'm too bad under conviction. Let me go on. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Verse number 17. James chapter 4, verse number 17. Who's there? Miss Ann, read that for me, please, ma'am. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Verse 17. Verse 17. All right. I didn't even read it. She did. I sure didn't say it. She didn't make it up, but God said it. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Total opposition to doing what you know you should do becomes sin to you. Right? Going the different way than what God said to go, doing the different thing than what God said to do becomes sin. I was, I was talking to a man not before last. He and I were talking, and, uh, and he was telling me about being in a restaurant. And God smote his heart with a gentleman behind him. Smote his heart. Said he was listening to that man talk. The man was talking about his heart was failing. His kidneys were operating about 16%. His lungs were uh, this and that, and he had congestive heart failure. And he said, he said, God smote my heart and said, talk to that man. Talk to him about, about me. He said, I sat there and I was eating my chicken. He said, I mean, he said, finally the man was on the phone and he hung up and Put his phone, took his tray, and got up and walked over. Put his and said, God, got more or less smote him hard and said, go talk to him. He's about to leave. Go talk to him. He said, and he grabbed the man, grabbed the hold to the door and said, when he did, said, I jumped up my, and said, before I got there, the man had gotten his car and was backing out. And he said, preacher, said, I, I'm going to meet God with that. He said, I knew what to do. He said, it felt as though I couldn't pray. It felt as if I couldn't pray. He said, so I know it was sin. I know it was sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him is sin. This thing here is possessed. I'm telling y'all, that thing possessed. Yeah. All right, I ain't touched that thing in no telling how long. And possessed ain't even in my contact, so I don't. <laughs> she ought to know. She's probably that way. Let's go home now. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. First John chapter 3 and verse number 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. 
Strong's says this on the word transgresseth. It says illegality that violates the law. Now we're not talking about the law of the land. We're talking about the law of God. But notice this. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. When, you, when a person, Paul said of all the law, he, he said he, that, that, that had it not been for thou shalt not covet, he'd have been all right, right? Ain't that what he said? He didn't know he was a sinner until thou shalt not covet come in the way and ate. It was just over with then. But when he committed whatever it was, the sin of covetousness, he became guilty of the entire law. How many was it? 613 laws. He became guilty of every one of them. All because he coveted something. So whoever commits sin transgresseth the law. transgresseth the law. The sin breaks the law of God. Now 1 John 5. Turn over two chapters. 1 John chapter 5. Look at verse number 17. All unrighteousness is sin. Look at that again. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin, what? Not unto death. Not unto death. Right there, that's a not unto death right there. There is a sin unto death. But all unrighteousness is sin. Webster says on the word unrighteousness is injustice. A violation of the divine law. Huh. Sounds a lot like what we looked at in 1 John 3, doesn't it? It's an injustice, a violation of the divine law. Unrighteousness, all unrighteousness, all things that are unrighteous, he said, is, is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Now, in all these things that Scripture also teaches, that there are three things that sin will do. I'm not going to ask you to turn, on, turn there, but you, you can look if you want to. I'll give you the Scripture, and I'll, I've got them written down here. James chapter 1 and verse number 15 says this. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Notice this. Uh, notice what he said. When lust hath conceived, it brings forth what? Sin. Then sin begins its work. And sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Now here's the first thing I want you to see that sin will do. Sin will lead you on. It'll lead you on. You ever heard, and I, I know that this, you, you ever heard of, of gateway drugs? Yes, sir. Yep. Gateway drugs? Gateway drugs, that means that there's a, for instance, it's it's really not thought bad about really no, anymore. But when I was when I was a young and son, if you smoked marijuana, you were dope head. Okay. Now now nowadays, if you smoke marijuana, that's just real light. There's not a whole lot to it. I mean, the cops will slap you on the back of the hand now and say they don't do it no more and go on. Okay. But most of the time, when a person got started on that, that after a little while, it didn't it didn't do them what they wanted to do anymore. So they had to go an extra step a little bit further. Okay? Now that person that, that, that started on marijuana had no intention one day that they were going to wind up here on 
on some pills or something. Yes, sir. And they'd have not one, one, one day that, that when those don't do anything else that they're going to wind up over here uh, on, uh, you know, snorting cocaine up their nose. And when that ceases to work, they're going to wind up over here uh, stif uh, shooting stuff in their arms, uh, making their dope out of Drano and, and, and everything else, uh, putting stuff in their body. You know, it, it all started with just something that wasn't really a whole lot, just a little sin. But sin leads us. It leads you. It leads you further without repentance. It'll lead you further and further and farther and farther until eventually it'll get you down to the bottom. Sin, when it is finished, what do you say, Brother John? Bringeth forth death. When it's all over with, when it's wrung you out and wrung you dry, it's over with. Sin Sin will lead you on. Number two, not only will sin lead you on, sin, according to what we read in Numbers 32 and verse number 23, sin will find you out. Yeah. Numbers 32 and verse 23, but if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You ever hit anything? Yes, sir. Thought you had it hid? Mm -hmm. Thought you had it put away? Nobody knows but me. And then God wreck your cookie cart. Yes, sir. Turn things upside down and exposes your sin. There's a, there's a guy that I, I used to know years ago. He was the pastor of Kenwood Baptist Church down there. Brother Dean and him will remember what I'm talking about. Brother Philip probably will. Uh, years ago, this guy, casinos hadn't been out down on the coast long. And uh, they had still in them boats and stuff down there. And, and the church had begun to get suspicious about their pastor. Somebody said every night, every Friday, he'd come on Fridays and stay on Friday night, Saturday, and, and leave on, on Sunday night. But every Friday night, around 10, 30, 11 o'clock, they had a little house right beside one of the members. He said, I don't know what it is, but that preacher leaves and stays gone. They watched him for months on end. They, that left there. He, he go, left every Every Friday night, he'd go. He'd leave. So two of them got together and said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We need to, we need to go follow him. Somebody said, oh, preacher, that was wrong. Well, they, they, needed, they needed to find out what was going on. They had been hearing some things back, and they said, we've got to find out. We can't have this at the church. And they got in the car, and they followed him. They followed him down, down Highway 49 to Highway 90. He took a left, followed him all the way down into Biloxi. Pulled off in there, and one of them... Casinos. They sat in the parking lot about 30 minutes. And about 30 minutes passed by. They got out, of the, got out of the car. And they walked in there. And they said, there he was. Sitting at one of them one arm bandits. Throwing money in there. And he was cranking that handle. Said they never knew. He never knew they was there. So they walked up behind him. And said they just looked and said, Hey, preacher, you want anything yet? And said he turned around, looked at him, and said, I never figured y'all would find this out. I never figured y'all would find this out. Let me tell you something. God will expose what needs to be exposed. You may hide it. You may hide it for as long as as you can but eventually it's going to come out it's going to come out you better be careful your sin will find you out Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 
For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We're back there again. Preacher, what's that got to do? Sin will pay you off. What's the wages? The wages of sin is death. There's been a lot of folk die a premature death because of their sin. Been a lot of folks but die. It's been said that sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And that's the, that's the case. A good study of your Bible will prove that men and women of old didn't get by with sin, and neither were you. Men and women didn't get of old time, didn't get David didn't get by with it. You ain't either. I ain't either. Amen. Not gonna happen. In Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 15, I'm not gonna go there, but there's a good picture of what sin will do in the life of a believer. I'm just gonna give you this outline and you can go home and study it. If you get your pencil out, wanna write it down. Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 15. We see, first of all, Isaiah 59, verse 1 said, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither to hear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquity has separated between you and your God, and your sin has hid his face from you. And you can continue to go on through there, but that's the first two verses. We find there the first thing that, in verse 2, that sin separates. Sin separates. It'll separate a man from A, his creator. It'll separate B, a man from his church. You get too involved in sin, what's the first thing you want to do? Take out on God, don't you? I've seen it, and I've seen it, and I've seen it. You get too carried away in sin, first thing... You don't have time for God a whole lot to take out of church. Sin, it'll separate you. It'll separate a man from his companion. Believe that? Yes, sir. Sure will. Sin will separate a man from his children. Number two. Sin steals. You find that in verses 8 through 11. Sin steals. Sin will steal your peace. Sin will, sin, sin will steal your perception. Sin will steal your power. Verses 10 and 11. Then number three, I've done. Sin scars. Verse 12. It will scar A, your character. B, it will scar your conscience. And probably the worst is C, it will scar your children. Be careful what we do with sin. The doctrine of sin. Next week, the Lord willing, we'll look at the escape from sin. Any questions or comments on what we've looked at tonight? Huh? Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. All right, anyone else? I don't like to deal with that with the raw guilty record. Boy, I am. I can tell you that. That's